So hello everyone and welcome back. If you made it through the last video, congratulations. It was a long one and it was very theoretical and maybe a little bit dry. In this video, I'm hoping to bring it home a little bit more practically and get into some examples and specifically look at one area which has really irked me. And looking at some of those things that irked me will hopefully explain why I've sort of worked on that framework that we looked at in the last video. For those of you with sharp eyes, you'll see that I've added a few more things here on the part two. It's an ever evolving situation. I don't have all the answers, but I'm really enjoying the comments and trying to answer them where I can um, to the best of my ability. So thanks so much for the support. I'm going to preface this video by saying it's another long one. I know that I said that I like videos that are under 15 minutes, but I'm going to quote Mark Twain here and say, that I'm sorry for the long video, I didn't have the time to write a short one or to make a short one. So because it's such a long video, I've put lots of timestamps in there. So feel free to just jump around, have fun. Hope it's of value. So the way I want to start part two is by actually looking at a summary of part one, but a bit obscurely. So asking the question to wiki or not to wiki. So I'm sure most people know Wikipedia. And if I go to Wikipedia and let's say I've been researching capitalism and I go to capitalism, there we go. So if I go to the article on capitalism, there's a whole bunch of text here, but it's all hyperlinked to other pages. So if I go to an economic system, it takes me there. And then I can go to a system of production and it takes me there. So it's all joined by the internet's version of backlinking, which is hyperlinks. So yeah, I'm not an internet friendly, but I think that's how it works. So what happens if we do this in LogSeq? So I'm going to start with the example. I'm going to investigate three options. The, the journal, using the journal to input information, using pages to input information, and the wiki approach, which is using links in pages at random. And then I'm going to investigate where these sit on knowledge hierarchy. And this is not a framework that I've developed. It's just the way that I've, I've, I've thought about it and hopefully make it a little bit fun and visual. So bringing up my wiki, I am going to go to my knowledge graph to give us a start. Or let me, let me actually just go to, let me search the page capitalism. So capitalism. And here we go. I've got some of the paragraphs that I found on Wikipedia. So capitalism is an economic system, blah, blah, blah. So if I click into economic system, it takes me to a page where an economic system is a system of production, whatever, and I can click on that and this is all good and well. And then if I want to go into, you know, economic theory, I could click on that, but I'm pretty sure this page is going to be empty. It is because I couldn't keep creating pages because it's just a, it's just a dump of information. Now, what does this look like on your knowledge graph? If I go to my knowledge graph, pretty chaotic. It's just words linked to one another. And you can see this is the rabbit hole that I went down where I went capitalism, um, the economy, Marxism, socialism, whatever. It was just an example. I didn't want to use anything too controversial like evolution or whatever, but in hindsight, maybe capitalism and socialism are controversial topics. Nonetheless, let's, let's forge ahead. So this is not a very useful knowledge graph. It's just linking words. So what is another approach to do this? So if I go and I look at the pages approach, let me open that demo and I've called it tags. If I go to capitalism here, you can see that I've, I've entered information about capitalism and then I've entered these two tags at the end. And I haven't done it in any fancy way. Like you can use templates and you can use the hashtag. It'll work, but just for purposes of being really simple, just added social systems and market theory as the two tags underneath capitalism. So I look at the paragraph and I see, oh, it's about social systems and market theory. Let me go to Marxism, which was another one that I, I had. So again, it's not linked to any pages, but it's, it's got these, um, again, the references to social systems and market theory. If I, if I click on market theory, you can see that the page is empty, but I've linked the other pages to market theory as a tag. So that's very important. There's no information in market theory. I'm not like writing the Wikipedia version or the definition just, which is an information dump. I'm, there's actually some sort of link or context that I'm applying here. 
Now, what does this look like in my knowledge graph? So if I go to my knowledge graph, you can see a lot more usable. So it's, it's linking concepts here. So I've got capitalism, Marxism and socialism, which are linked to market theory and social systems. And I can see that fascism is also linked to a social system. I've got production, which is linked to market theory and economics. And then I've got economic systems, which will be linked to economics. Capitalism should actually be linked to economic systems. So let me go there and say economic systems. And I guess socialism should be the same, but you know, it, it creates a bit more uh, usable link. Um, let me actually do the same for Marxism, where these things are, are linked by their context. So if I go to my graph, well, it's a little bit chaotic in here, not the best example, but I can still see I've got these nodes of information where things are forming around. So I've got social systems, I've got market theory, I've got economic systems, and there's a bit better of a link. You know, if I, if I didn't have that economic systems, it would be, you know, even better. But I'm not going to go back and change my example because that would be disingenuous of me. Now, what's another approach that I could do? I could just enter these into my journal just on a day by day basis. So if I go to my demo for journal, ha, there we go. I've got an economic system as I entered on May the 10th, production I entered on May the 9th, May the 8th I entered fascism, whatever, just entering into my journal as a database, but not into a separate page for each of these things. What happens if I go to my graph now? So if I go there and I view my graph, no links. So this is a super clean graph and I can see all the things that I'm, I'm interested in and, but there's no links. So, you know, again, it's, it's all about trade-offs and I don't know which one is the right one for me. I'm still figuring it out, but I just wanted to illustrate what happens when you do the things in different ways. Now, the nice thing about this is I can still like, you know, look around my asteroid belt, as I mentioned in the last video of things, and then I can see what I might be interested in. So say now I'm interested in market theory. So I click there and here I have all my link references. So I can see here, I was writing about production, and but it's in the journal. So, you know, maybe in this case, it would actually be better if I had the pages approach and I clicked on mark, market theory and then it gave me the title of the page there. Let's go see what that looks like. If I go to my tags demo, and I go to my view graph, let me see my market theory. And I can see, ah, I've got the page Marxism linked to that, socialism linked to that, capitalism linked to that. So, you know, again, what information do you want to have in your journal? What information do you want to have in your pages? Do you want to have your journal linked here or do you want to have a page linked here? It's really a case of personal preference. Okay, so getting into PowerPoint again, I'm going to look at the, the sort of hierarchy of information. And it's going to start left to right and then I'm going to move it into a pyramid. So hopefully this works out. So I don't know if anyone has seen this graph before. That's where I got it on the internet, but it starts with data and it's just points of information just scattered randomly. And then when you start linking those points of information, so here they're linked by color, that's when it becomes information. Definitions are not important, but I think it's more, you know, adding context to the, or adding some value to the, to the data. And then the next level up is knowledge. And that's where I'm now, you know, making things that are greater than the sum of the parts. So it's not just, you know, linking those two things is by taking them and saying, oh, I'm going to make something even better with this knowledge. So that's a nice way to look at it from a left to right sequence. But what about a pyramid? So let's use a pyramid. So we've got data at the bottom, information at the top and knowledge. Sorry, information above that and knowledge at the top. So this is now the, you know, the levels of abstraction, if you can call it that. Now, how do I see this like fitting into LogSeq? So I see plain text and a wiki as being this lowest level of data, because as we saw in Wikipedia, you're just clicking around and it's not really adding any value to you. However, when you start adding context and that's by using tags, that's when you get to the level of information. You are joining these different, um, these different dots and they're joined by colors here. And, you know, depending on if you use journal or pages, it might draw lines in your graph. Hopefully that doesn't throw you off because the lines in the graph up top there are actually a little bit more than that, which is you combining some, you combining these different pieces of information to make something that is greater than the sum of the parts. 
So this is the full progression, really, really nice, like drawing. And hopefully we can all get to a place of wisdom, but it's hard and we have to acknowledge our failings and acknowledge that these systems are not going to work always and that our brains are sometimes not going to work too. And um, yeah, speaking about that, we must be careful, I guess, of conspiracy theories, which is my favorite depiction of this drawing. Okay, so getting back to LogSeq, there were some questions that were raised in my head when I was structuring my database, which is how can I go about creating hierarchy if it's actually required? And what if I want to avoid queries for tags? Because in the beginning, I was not very sure of queries. Now they're like a part of my workflow. But you know, for someone who's getting started, maybe it's something that's a little bit intimidating. So we'll get into that in a second. But how can I go about creating hierarchy if required? So one of the ways that I think about doing this is by using content hubs. So I'm, I'm back in another demo database. I've got lots of these floating around at the moment. And if I open my contents page, going TC, you can see here I've used the contents to create some sort of structure. And you could think of this almost as folders. But I don't really think of it as folders in the stricter sense. I think of it more as tags. But what I've done here is I've entered different sort of hierarchies or categories that I can then reference later. So if I go to my graph, what will that look like? Oh, there's going to be a lot of mess here, but let's find it. Um, here we go, contents. So there's a nice little hub that I can go to. And if that's something that you want, it's a nice easy way to do that. You can, you can, and you can create more of these hubs. So for instance, for my videos, I've got one which is, you know, one stuttering mind videos. And then I've got a hub of all the different videos that I'm working on so that I can just look and see which ones I want to add a little bit more information to. So that's, that's how I go about creating a little bit of structure. And the second question is, what if I want to avoid queries for tags? So there's a super nice way to do this where instead of just, you know, only or having to use queries to do your and structure, or whatever, let me use, let me find something in here. Let's say now I want to find something which is related to happiness. So let me go and type happiness. And here you can see that I've got all these linked references. But now what if I wanted to find something which is related to happiness, but doesn't have anything related to money in it. So what I can do is I can click on this filter here. And if I click to include something and I shift click it, it will uninclude it. So if I shift click money, it will unfilter or it will take out that one option, which had something to do with money. And you can see there, yeah, happiness and money. And you can see there I've got um, money only, but if I click this, I can then choose something which I want to filter by. So instead of using nots and ands and all your brilliant logic in your queries, you can just click around using your filters when you have a well tagged database. So that makes it really easy to find things. And now I can say, Oh, so here's a book that is, let's see what I've filtered about has got religion in it, but hasn't got money in it. And it's how will you measure your life? This is just a fake example. The book hasn't got religion in it. It's got a lot, lots to do about money. It's actually a really good, good read. So now the question arises, what if I've already structured things that I now want to change? So I'm going to go into my own example here because I have created a wiki of notes. So as mentioned, one of my design principles was that I want to keep the graph as clear as possible. Now, this is what it looked like before I started working on it. So my personal graph here, you can see just like loads of clutter, loads of unnecessary connections. And I really hope that the next picture does it justice, but this is what it looks like now. So, you know, I've tried to declutter it as much as possible. There's still a little bit of stuff up here, which I need to go and sort out. And, but I mean, there's before and there's after. So a lot better. And I can start to see a little bit of nodes of thought developing, hopefully in some areas. Now, this little part here is what I want to deal with now, because this is one of the nodes that I left for the recording of this video, because it was, such a good example of poor structure. So if I go to my graph, this is the offending area and it's all about stock picks. So at the beginning of the year, I got really into looking at stock pick information and I thought I would write up my rationale so that I could justify my decisions. But hey, uh, fooled by randomness, I don't think we can ever win against the stock market. I, I think there's a bit of a disclaimer required whenever you talk about like anything related to investing, but don't take this as investment advice. I'm not an investment professional. In fact, I'll probably lose money for you. I once invested in a herd of Nyala with friends. That's a type of antelope. 
it didn't go well. Um, and what you can see here is I've got like individual pages for all these stocks. So, you know, and then I, I linked them to where I found them. I looked, um, you know, thought about maybe doing options trading on some of them. And, but this really isn't useful information. If I go into data dog and I didn't actually end up writing about them, but then I started relating it to Altrix as like something to look at, uh, nothing there. Um, SAP was definitely not something I related anything to, but you know, not, not useful information. So what is another way of doing this? So rather than putting them all in like their own separate pages, I would much rather put them in one page, which is stock picks. And yes, everything here is linked, but that's not really useful information for me. Like I, like it's just creating clutter and it's not like any sort of knowledge that I want to use, but like here I might like put something which is, I could use it as a, as a tag for like insurance stock things. So let me actually create a new page, which is insurance stocks or big data stocks. And here I'll create that there. And I'm just going to move through this very quickly, hopefully. And now you can see that I have found it and it's completely changed the game. There, It's like just a small note of information. There's no funny things hanging around and linked to this and linked to that. Nice and clean. What happens if I still want to find one of my stocks? I can just go here, Roku, for instance, you know, find what I might've written about it and I can create a page. And then, you know, the beauty about Logseek is that I can look at unlinked references. So, oh, there we go. You know, it doesn't have to be linked to find it. So that's, you know, hopefully helpful just to simplify your database. Another perhaps bigger picture question is, should this even be in Logseek? Like, that I didn't even end up writing the rationale. Like I just ended up putting in Google Sheets and I put the triggers there. So yeah, so using the right tools also something that I'm still learning because I think I get a bit eager and I'm like, I'm gonna do everything in LogSeq and financial stuff, not quite there yet, probably never will be. Another cool thing that you can do is make edits outside of LogSeq. So, you know, because you own your own data, you, you own your own notes, they're stored locally or on a cloud drive, whatever you might do in markdown file which is super accessible and you know will be around for the next hundred years i think um you can you can edit your files manually what happens when you you know do anything in logseq is it creates these folders logseq journals pages drawers and assets so most of the examples that you would have seen would only create these three to the left which is journals pages and logseq Logseq houses your configuration options. There's just three files there. If you want to use custom CSS, you can you can put them in there. Journals houses all your date-based information. So that's where you know my majority of information is housed, just in those data dumps. Pages is when you create the backlink. It creates a page for it. Draws is when you create a um, a draw using Excalidraw, which is built in. Um, open source tool for mind mapping into Logseq and then assets as if you drop any files into Logseq. So, you know, you can copy paste pictures and, and it gets stored in assets. So when you load up Logseq, what's happening is the app or web app is consuming this information and generating this nice infinite processing tool that you can use to very simply see all your data. So looking at my notes, those are the four files. If I look at assets, I can see I've got all these different graphs. What is this one? And I don't have to open Logseek. I can go and find it there. The life of a project. Best idea ever. Dark night of the soul. I think I might be answering a bit of that one because making videos is hard. It's done and it sucks, but not as bad as I thought. So hopefully these are good and valuable. Anyway, so everything is stored on your computer. It's, it's a great way of like just dropping information and storing it. Now, this gives you a lot of power, including if you want to clean up your database. So say now you've used a link that you don't actually want to use and you just want to remove it from everywhere. And this relates to the point above. What if you've already structured things that now want to change? I guess the point that I was trying to make, which I didn't make very well there, is that it's not set in stone. You can very easily go and fix these things, some more easily than others. And if you know how to use Markdown and you know some sort of script editing program, you can do it much quicker than what I was doing it there. I'm not super proficient with other script editing programs, so I, I tend to trust what I'm doing in Logseq. But if you if you know what you're doing, you can get around like the the loading time of 
all the different nodes as you saw it, it took a little bit long for me to do that but how i make edits directly outside of logseek is you can open a tool and and one that is quite nice is if you use vs code so vs code is great because what i can do is i can open the full folder so if i open a folder and here's my logseek database which i'm using as a test and let me open this folder and then you can see i've got my journal my pages everything here but the great thing about this is if i want to change you know one file or so if i want to change a word across all these files so i remember that money was a word in in the file so what i can do i want to remove that tag completely so let me go to my to my base and show you what is happening with that one there so if i go here so let's remove a couple of of examples here where i've got okay i've got religion 10 out of 10 is linked i've got i've got books i've got you know what let's go big let's delete all the links and if i not go if i close this let me close my graph and i go to vs code and if i find replace that and i replace it with nothing um let me say replace all yes replace okay cool replace that replace that i should definitely have made a backup of this and if i now replace that there we go let's exit this and see what happens i haven't actually tried this Pff, i'm a little bit nervous okay so let's go to logseek again i'm going to open it up so i'm going to click here which is refresh and let me go to my graph Ta-da! Everything is now gone. So you can edit files en masse. Um, that's actually very cool. I hadn't tried that extreme an example before. So we've delved into how this works on your computer, the different folders. We've delved in how you can clean up the clutter using, using VS Code. Obviously, be very careful when you're doing that. Um, if, if you don't know what you're doing, make a backup and then do it because that could be quite tragic if you make a mistake and everything goes. So just be careful. And then some other questions. So what if I started with another tool, for example, Roam? So I think I made the switch around December, January, but I know that you can export to a JSON file from, or JSON from Roam, and then you can import here, um, import and export to Roam Research is coming, okay. So import JSON from Roam Research Experimental. It worked quite well for me um yeah give it a shot for those of you who are still deliberating if you want to go for roam or logseek and then the last thing which i wanted to talk to was but logseek doesn't have an app okay so this is again one of those like sort of starter questions which i thought uh, would i actually need it and for me the answer is no I, I don't need it but that's just because of my workflows like i know some people like to use the quick capture features on on Roam and that like, you know, plugs in directly. To be honest, I just use Google Keep and I, if I have something on the go, I just enter a note in there. It's just a little bit more of a burden of copy pasting it from from your Google Keep to, to your Logseek, but you know, there's small trade-offs and this, and an app is actually in the pipeline. So there's been, there was a discussion on the last meetup around when this will be. There's no promise of, of timeline, but I think it's within the next three, maybe maybe three to four months. I think 
uh, the team is really focused on getting the UX right first. And the Canary version of LogSeek is coming out, or is already out. So that will be the one that is stable and beta. And yeah, a lot of these like little teething issues will be sorted out. So super excited for that to come to come out. So I'm very interested for feedback. If this was you know more useful for you than the last video, if the combination of them really worked, I hope that the the wiki or not to wiki helped you sort of see what the consequences of these like you know linking all the words might be and yeah i really wish you best of luck in structuring your database i think it's it's a learning journey i'm still figuring this stuff out i've made so many mistakes and that's all part of the process and it just helps helps it to be better so yeah have fun